Hello everyone, I am Rocky Jaiswal from ZBI India. I will be talking to you about a migration project that we did which migrated an application from WebLogic to JBoss. JBoss is a leading open source application server which complies to the JE specifications or more, so, more specifically the JE5 specifications laid out by Sun and we moved an application from a legacy WebLogic 8, 8 application server to JBoss 5. In this presentation, we will cover the steps that we followed to do the migration, the challenges we faced and how we overcame them. The first question that arises is why should I migrate to JBoss? Well, JBoss is, as I said, open source, so it's free to use and distribute. That definitely has an impact on your development and testing cost. It is uh, also supported by Red Hat, so if you want an enterprise supported server for your production, it, there is an option to purchase a subscription from Red Hat, which helps. So all in all, it helps in the total co uh, lower cost of ownership. It is uh, in tune with Java 5, it is compiled on Java 5, so you can use Java 5 specific features such as generics and annotations, which make the application more development and deployment friendly. Also, since you are working on a later version of Java, you get more performance uh, and other factors as well. Um, the application that we migrated is called JMS Console. Uh, we'll just have a quick overview of what JMS Console does. Um, in a normal JMS application scenario, you have a message coming in, which is put onto a queue, and thereafter the queue it is picked up by whatever the consumer is configured for that queue. Uh, in our case, let's suppose the consumer is down or the network is down, in these cases, the message is moved on to an error queue, and this is where JMS console kicks in. It uh, listens on to the error queue, reads the messages from there, puts it into the database, and gives a user a friendly view to friendly view for the error messages inside that queue. The user can thereafter delete these messages or move them to the original queue if he sees that the consumer application is backed up. So this is the basic functionality JMS console provides. Feature-wise, it has authentication and authorization. Authentication is provided through a login screen. For authorization, we have created two roles. One is a reader and another one is a manager. The reader can just view the messages, whereas the manager can move them or delete them from the error queue. We also provide a basic search functionality on which um, you can search on the content of the messages. And this is what a JMS console application looks like. Uh, later on in the presentation or in the different video, we will have a running demo of the application running both on WebLogic as well as JMOS. Uh, to talk about the infrastructure of the old application, uh, as I said, we worked on WebLogic 8, uh, specifically 8.1.4. The database that we used was Oracle 10 g Release 2. Um, the Java version is 1.4. Uh, it uses GMS obviously uh, Spring MVC framework for the UI as well as for the Beans dependency injection as well as using for the search. So how did we go about the migration? Uh, the first step of, of the migration was definitely to prepare a blueprint or a plan to uh, migrate the application. We tried to identify the resources that are the suspects uh, or that would cause a crash let's say if we were to migrate the application and the uh, resources are like data source, data sources, JNDI context and lookup, the queues, connection factories, transaction manager, and the security configuration. Now, once we identified these things, we tried to set up uh, the similar um, a mirror image on uh, say JBoss. So we can set up a data source, let's say Oracle DS, which was there in WebLogic, and we set that up with the same name in JBoss. We set up the other things as well. Uh, like security and all. Uh, once we had done that, uh, we assumed that the like the application should run had it if it had does not have any WebLogic uh, specific dependency. To find out any WebLogic specific dependency, uh, the first thing we did was we uh, removed the WebLogic specific jar, which can be WebLogic dot jar or WL client dot jar, which has all the WebLogic uh, client specific libraries or the class files inside it. So we removed that from the build path and we saw if we had any compilation errors. We compiled the application or built it also on Java 5 because that is the target platform for JBoss 
and tried to see if there were any errors. Uh, we removed the compilation errors, uh, thankfully we got none. And finally we deployed the application on JBoss and just started the server to see what the errors would occur. So how did we exactly go about this migration? We were a team of four people, we divided ourselves in groups of two. Two individuals worked on uh, installing the application from the source code on WebLogic and Oracle and two of us worked on installing the same application onto JBoss. Once the WebLogic deployment was successful, as I mentioned earlier, we recognized the resources that we need to, to migrate and then all of us just created those resources, deployed the application on JBoss and resolved the runtime dependencies that we got. A few example runtime dependencies uh, that we encountered were uh, things like wiring of Spring Beans to WebLogic specific bean, for example the transaction manager or the WebLogic specific uh, JNDI lookup of the data source. Once we had resolved those dependencies, we uh, de deployed and improved the application again and again on JBoss until we met success. A uh, few observations uh, that we'd like to make. Uh, the major, one of the major roadblocks we faced was the incompatibility of the Oracle database driver with JBoss. So when you create a data source using the uh, JBoss admin console provided, the JBoss wraps the database driver in a certain way and that was incompatible with the CLOB writing of uh, data that we were using and we found no resolution for it. In fact, uh, <clears throat> on the Oracle forums that we found that uh, there, this hasn't been resolved in JBoss. So what we did was we used the Spring Data uh, Source Manager to create our data source and that worked perfectly well. We also encountered that uh, JBoss does not support uh, relative paths for security and uh, this is a known bug and we found the Jira reference to just do a simple Google search for it and the known workaround also for it. We also saw that uh, JBoss consumed more memory as compared to WebLogic and we tried to find out why. The reason being uh, JBoss runs on Java 5 which is much more memory intensive than uh, WebLogic which runs on Java 4, 1.4 and uh, also JBoss also provides certain set of features by default when you start the application server such as the EJB timer surface, uh, service and some other services as well but these services can be turned down so that can save some memory. The conclusion that we reach to at the end of this migration is that use of Spring framework definitely uh, enabled us to save a lot of work. Uh, it, since Spring inherently brings loose coupling to the application, all we need to change was a few wiring of beans here and there which were dependent on their logic uh, specific resources and the application work. Uh, we also found that the JBoss uh, deployment structure is much more intuitive and developer friendly. It's much easier to create a new domain, um, to create uh, new services. And we also found that any uh, problem that we encountered in our JBoss deployment, it was very easy to find the um, the core problem to find the workarounds just through a simple Google search. Since everything is open source, there's a huge community around it, and usually the problem that you have faced might have been faced someone by someone else in the community earlier. That's it. Thank you very much. Uh, in the next video, I'll talk about the actual application. We'll show you a demo for it.